Well, welcome back to the Prospect Club. We're going to talk about in this video, believe it or not, we're talking about this video, uh, the top 19 picks of this year's draft. The Mets are going to be picking 19th. And I have this mock draft from SNY.TV. Before we get into this video, you need to hit that subscribe button. This is uh, from Joe DeMeo. 2024 MLB Mock Draft 2.0. Mets taking power hitting third baseman. Tommy White, known as Tommy Tanks, has serious thump. The 2024 MLB draft is less than two weeks away. The three-day, 20-round event will take place in Texas. I will be doing a live stream on the baseball hype, and you need to... I'll put the link into the channel for this video so you can subscribe, so you can follow along. The home of this year's All-Star Game festivities in Texas. As the draft gets closer, there is more buzz connecting certain prospects with specific teams. And this is considered a heavy uh, college draft. There's not even any big, like... Uh, young players in terms of high school players that are considered big time players. So it's going to be a very heavy college uh, player uh, group. It's important to remember that unlike the NFL, NBA, and NHL drafts, the MLB version ends up not always being just purely best player available as there are financials involved in the bonus pool system. Teams often evaluate prospects in tiers, which allows them to group players and determine the best pick and value for their franchises. To explain the bonus pool system, each selection in the top 10 rounds is assigned a slot value, and the sum of each team's 10 rounds of picks values is their bonus pool for the draft. One other caveat is that any amount over 150000 issued to a player pick beyond the 10th round counts towards each team's pool. Teams may distribute that money however they wish. There are already rumors of some players, some teams plan to go under slot in the first round to potentially overslot a failing high school talent beyond the first round. The Mets did this back in 2019 with Matt Allen. Now, Matt Allen hasn't pitched at all, so this was not a successful thing. Now, I would mention they, they went over slot with Kuma Rocker three years ago, and they had to go under slot basically through the whole entire draft, and then the Mets could not uh, do anything with Kuma Rocker because his arm was bad, so they didn't sign him. Here's the number one pick. The Guardians will select the Guardians will select shortstop second baseman J.J. Weatherholt from West Virginia. Now, shortstops are not very good and not considered a good pick in the college level. That's not been a successful pick. Better uh, draft than a high school player, but it is the Guardians and they always do a good job. It can be passion, but there is word that the Guardians are looking to save money to be aggressive beyond round one for high school pitching. Well, the Hulk may cut a deal because if he doesn't go number one, he may go until number four or number five at earliest. Could Cleveland offer somewhere between the number three and number four slot and save $2 million while getting a player they really like? And number two, the Reds will select second baseman Travis Bazana, who has been rumored for a while to go at number one, and he's from Oregon State. Bazana may be less motivated than what the Hulk would be to take a deal at number one as most believe his floor is number four. I have heard the Reds connected primarily to college bats here. I don't believe they are looking to cut a big discount. At number three, the Rockies. They will they will draft, according to this mock draft, outfielder Charlie Condon from Georgia. There's been a lot of buzz connecting the Rockies to West Lake Forest right here in the Chase Birds. And that is still very possible. However, the trickle effect of Weatherholt going number one is possibly the top player in the class in Condon sitting here, and the Rockies have done a good job in the last few years of taking the player who falls in their lap in the first round. And number four, the Athletics. First baseman, they will select first baseman Jack Hagley Noni from Florida. This is a high point for Wake Forest first baseman Nick Kurtz, if Oakland is looking to cut a deal. It sounds like Cagnione, Cagnione isn't going to fall out of the top five and could go as high as number two. He is a two-way player. Uh, he's a left-handed hitter and a left-handed pitcher. Um, he's more considered a bat than he is an arm, but we'll see. He, he's, he's a very exciting player. And number five, the White Sox will draft out for the Connor Griffin from Jackson Prep High School in Mississippi. One of the big questions heading into the draft is when the first high school player will come off the board. For the top two high school hitters, Griffin or California High School shortstop Bryce Rainier, don't go here. Neither likely goes in the top eight. So there's potential for the White Sox to save some slot money here. Griffin may have the best overall tools in the class, 
but they will need to be swing adjustments and pro ball. At number six, the Royals will select right-handed pitcher Chase Burns, Mr. Burns, from Wake Forest. I believe, excellent. And I believe Texas A&M, <laughs> get it, break it up. Uh, I believe Texas A&M outfielder Braden Montgomery could be in play here. Word has been pretty loud on the Royals focusing on college pitching with this pick. There are two options this high in Burns and Hagen Smith and Arkansas. At number seven, the Cardinals will select outfielder from, from Texas A&M, Braden Montgomery. Montgomery could go as high as number four, but he is here for the Cardinals. He broke his ankle in the NCAA Super Regionals, but there didn't appear to be any long-term damage, so his stock trade, his trade stock, shouldn't fall too much. At number eight, the Los Angeles Angels will select left-handed pitcher Hagen Smith from Arkansas. The Angels have prioritized getting prospects who can get to the majors very quickly over the last couple of drafts. S Smith is the type of pitcher who could potentially have a short stay in the minors. Don't discount an underslot deal with Florida State out for the James Tibbs III. At number nine, the Pirates will select from Wake Forest first baseman Nick Kurtz. In baseball, you never dra draft for need, but the Pirates are a team that feels close to making that big jump on the backs of their young premium pitching. Getting an advanced college bat like Kurtz could make a quick difference. Tibbs is another name who could be in play here. At number 10, shortstop Bryce Rainier, Hartford Waste Lake, West Lake High School in California. Now he, boy, just looking at this, he looks like the perfect Nationals type player. And that's typically Hunt upside. Throughout the process, they have heavily linked, they've been heavily linked to Rainier and Griffin. One scout told me he'd be surprised if Nationals did not end up with one of those two, with preference for Griffin. At number 11, the Tigers will take left-handed pitcher Cam Caminiti from Sagara High School in Arizona. If Curtis and Ran Rainier slide outside of the top 10, I think the Tigers pounce. Since that did not happen in this scenario, there has been strong buzz that they have been all over Caminiti this spring. It sounds like that Caminiti is going to end up in the top 15 and be the first high school arm off the board. At number 12, second baseman, going to the Red Sox, is Christian Moore from Tennessee. Moore was the star of the College World Series champion, Tennessee Volunteers. He, I have heard the Red Sox mostly linked college bats, and Moore has the swag and confidence necessary to thrive in a big market. And number 13, right-handed pitcher Trey Yasevich from East Carolina. Two scouts told me that the Giants are hoping for Caminiti. He isn't available in this scenario, so they take the third college pitcher in the class. Well, do Burns to Mr. Burns eliminated Wake Forest and the NCAA regionals. And number 14, out for the James Tibbs the third from Florida State. Tibbs has long been looked at as the underslot option in the back of the top 10. He could go anywhere from top number eight to the mid-teens. At number 15, the Mariners will select shortstop outfielder Seaver, Seaver King from Wake Forest. The Mariners are a wild card and could be a team to cut a deal with someone like Florida High School shortstop Kellen Lindsey or Mississippi State switch hitter Jerang, Jerango Clintegi. <laughs> I believe they'll also be uh, interested in the bat speed and exit velocity that King brings to the table. At number 16, outfielder and the Marlins will select outfielder Carson Bench from Oklahoma State. Bench looks to be an option between here and the early 20s, including the Mets. He needs some swing adjustments in Pro Bowl, but he is a good athlete. Puts the ball hard and has a strong arm. He, has a, he was a two-way player in college and hit up to 96 miles per hour on the, on the radar gun from the mound. He's an interesting player. I've heard his name connected quite a few places. Number 17, the Brewers will select outfielder Vance Honeycutt from North Carolina. There's another guy I've heard of with the mess. Uh, I believe this is the earliest spot Honeycutt could, would come off the board. And the Brewers tend to like up the middle athletes. Despite the strikeout issues, I believe the Mets are very interested in Honeycutt, but in this scenario, they don't have the chance to consider him. And number 19, the Rays will select third baseman Cam Smith from Florida State. Smith is an option at as high as number 12 and is expected to be off the boards in the teens. 
The Rays are often a team that isn't afraid to take a player who's, who is publicly ranked much higher than their selection. But here they are taking a failing, falling Smith. They'll select from LSU third baseman Tommy White. As we get close to the draft, I have heard the Mets connected to additional players who could be in consideration here. Though that list is primary cultures like King, Honeycutt, Benj, and Mississippi State outfield of Dakota Jordan. I've heard all those names. I've also heard some interesting Iowa right-hander Brody Brock and a couple of high school players in Lindsay and Air Elk City, Oklahoma. Left-hander Cash Mayfield. Why are Tommy Tanks as he's known receive national notoriety when he hit 27 homers in 55 games as a true freshman? At North Carolina State, he transferred to LSU, where he, along with last year's number two overall pick, Dylan Cruz, was two of the biggest factors in LSU winning the College World Series. He's been the type of player who, at least in college, would step up when the lights were the brightest. Though 2024 was White's worst college season, he hit 330 with a 4 on base, 630 slugging percentage with 24 homers and 70 RBIs in 66 games. He did trim his strikeout percentage to 12% while maintaining a walk percent of weight and rate of 8.6%. He has bat speed and power to all fields that could result in 25 plus homers, homer potential at the next level. The defensive questions are real, as he has played third base the last two years despite being a well below average athlete. He did make some strides defensively third this year, and I would expect a pro team to start his career as a third baseman. Most scouts believe he's long, a long-term first baseman. If White ends up at first base, that would require the bat to really reach its potential. And a draft lacking depth in up the middle athletes in the first round, this scenario has the Mets going for a potential middle of the order bat with some defensive questions. Now, uh, there has been some questions about these types of players at first, but I would mention that Peter Alonso was one of these kind of guys, and hard work can get a guy to be a good defensive or average defensive first baseman, so that is, I, I, I would mention that in this video, but uh, you let me know what you think about this video, of course, please subscribe to the Prospect Hut, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.